Hey guys, welcome back to the Bio Corner. This video is going to be a continuation on the previous video on post-translational modifications. Uh, as we had talked about last time on methylation um, and acetylation and how those things affect the genes either activating or repressing um, certain transcriptions that actually affect phenotype. Well, we're going to talk about genetic imprinting um, in further detail in this video and compare Angelman syndrome and Prater Willies. So, to get started, um, we need to understand what genetic imprinting is. And I have a very brief definition of genomic imprinting here. Um, so, when one X chromosome in each cell is randomly inactivated, um, you have one left. So let's say for uh, female, we know we have XX. For male, we have XY. Well, we need um, equal expression from male and female. So what happens is we have something called genomic imprinting that comes in and silences one of the X's for the um, female and then the Y for the male and male and female both have one X. So that's what genomic imprinting is. Um, <clears throat> and we will go further into that. Um, so when we talk about imprinting, um, you could also refer to that as silencing, gene silencing in a way. Um, and I have example written down here is because I'm going to show y'all exactly what this all means and how one gets inactivated in um, a drawing I will do later on in this video. So we're going to go ahead and talk about Angelman syndrome and prater willi syndrome. And to start out with this, we're going to go through the symptoms, then talk about their pedigrees, how each um, are inherited and then we'll go on to characteristics and then exactly where these deletions um, occur. So for Angelman syndrome, um, this syndrome affects the nervous system. Uh, the syndrome is usually diagnosed at a young age just because um, these symptoms are um, not easily identified, but they are present and you can see them in the phenotype of, you know, the child. Um, also in their first few years of life, you can tell because they usually aren't able to um, walk, crawl, things like that. They have mobility um, issues um, in the age where they're actually supposed to start crawling. So. That's one sign. Um, that's why I wrote ataxia. Um, also, I wrote down happy is because they always uh, seem to be in a good mood. They're always laughing. They're always smiling. They're always happy. Um, speech impairment as well. Also, um, they have a very, uh, I guess, they have a characteristic. And... Um, this is happy jerky movements. So like if you put um, a child with AS on a bed, you can see them kind of slowly doing these uh, jerky movements. Um, it's something they can't control, it just happens. Um, so that's another sign of Angelman syndrome. Um, so those are a few of the symptoms um, and signs of Angelman syndrome or what are seen in kids that have this. Um, for the visual, I'm going to come over here and zoom in. <clears throat> and um, whether you're familiar with pedigrees or not, hopefully it'll help you if I explain it a bit. So how pedigrees work are, um, you know, you have all these squares and circles. Um, the squares are usually males or they're always males. Um, circles are females. Um, the dot means that they're uh, a carrier of a certain mutation or have the mutation. 
um, in that case. And then the shaded ones are the ones that are affected. So <clears throat> for Angelman's, um, Angelman syndrome, as you can see here, um, let's say the father is affected with, um, or uh, he's a carrier. Um, over here you can see that one daughter and one son are affected. Uh, the son gets married, and then one of his girls is affected. I mean, not affected, carrier, sorry. Dad is affected, his daughter is a carrier, and then the daughter um, has a daughter that is also um, affected. So um, what we can see here and here, um, for the kids that were affected, the offspring that were affected with Angelman syndrome, uh, it was inherited by the mother. So the circle with the dot, um, the children that were affected both inherited it from the mother, not the father. And this is because uh, we have a maternal deletion and parental imprint. So for Angelin syndrome, um, it's always going to be inherited from the mother. Um, I will go on to explain what UBE3A is. Um, and why it's so specific to Angelman syndrome later on. So let me zoom out if I can. Okay. So <clears throat> for the deletion, um, for Angelman syndrome, um, as I said before, maternal deletion um, and parental imprint. And as I explained before, imprinting is like silencing. So you'll have the I mean, maternal deletion in a specific gene called UBE3A, um, which y'all saw in the pedigree below. So that's where the deletion occurs um, on that gene, uh, maternal deletion. We have a paternal imprint. <clears throat> Sorry. And this occurs on chromosome 15. Also, let me see if I want to add anything to that. So when we talk about imprinting, um, we talked about it over here, um, inactivation, things like that. If we go back to the previous video where we talked about methylation and acetylation, methylation usually represses um, transcription for a certain gene so it kind of silences it so over here when you say imprint uh, we're going to be talking about methylation okay we said it occurs on chromosome 15 uh, ube3a is uh, where the deletion occurs in that gene so maternal deletion on UBE3A gene, okay? And for the wild type, what usually happens is the maternal, um, maternal is expressed. But when we have this maternal deletion, that's when, you know, the child develops Angelman syndrome that's where it occurs. Okay, so those are some basics for the exactly where the deletion occurs, what's imprinted or silenced, where what chromosome, and where on the chromosome and what gene does the maternal deletion occur on. So those are some main points you all need to know. <clears throat> also, I found a picture of a child that has Angelman syndrome. Um, as y'all can see, this child is very happy. Um, this child also, y'all can see um, how it affects the nervous system. The hands are 
you know, tight, tense. Also, um, some facial features, um, things like that. I just thought that would be interesting to also include. Um, let me zoom back out and let's start with Prater Willies. So for Prater Willie syndrome, um, usually this is diagnosed in children. Um, hypotonia seen, which is weak muscle tone. Uh, they have very weak muscle tone when they're young. Um, so over here I have excessive eating, excessive appetite. And what that means is around two to four years of um, their life, they beget, they become um, obsessed with food. Um, they have this uncontrollable, excessive appetite for food. They never feel full and they always want to eat. That's why usually um, if you read up on families um, that have um, children with prater willi syndrome, they usually find ways to lock up cabinets, things like that. So um, their children are unable to get into it because um, this excessive appetite later leads to, um, you know, diabetes, uh, obesity, things like that. And um, it's really hard. Um, so that's one thing that, you know, gets to a lot of people because some people don't know that, but this genetic disorder, um, or you can think of it as um, a deletion that um, allows for excessive appetite um, in this syndrome just altogether. Um, delayed development, fair skin tone, underdeveloped genitals, sleeping issues, small hands and feet. Um, as y'all can see down here, I found a picture of um, a child with Prater Willies. Um, you can see the small hands, small feet, the fair skin. Um, this child's also obese. Um, so those are some of the symptoms that are seen with um, children with Prater Willies. So I could not find a pedigree just for Prater Willi syndrome, but I found it with um, Angelman syndrome. So they're like side by side to compare. And <clears throat> sorry, as I stated before, um, this is Prater Willi's right here. AS is Angelman syndrome. Squares are males, circles are females. The ones with the dot are carriers. The ones that are shaded in are the ones affected. So as you can see here, um, father is not a carrier, mother is a carrier, um, then their kids, they have two that are normal, um, one female that is a carrier, one male that is a carrier. This male carrier then has children and his son is affected. Um, and for Prater Willies, we have a parental deletion. Um, unlike Angelman syndrome where we have the maternal deletion and that's why we see the uh, mother is the one that inherits Angelman syndrome uh, when prater willi syndrome since we have uh, the parental deletion uh, the male inherits it to their offspring so that's that and for the deletion, let me write that. We can do like we did for the other one, just kind of briefly talk about it. Um, so for prater willi syndrome, we have paternal deletion, as we explained in the pedigree, maternal imprint. Imprint, let me zoom out, or hold on. 